going on here. Okay. Okay, so we got our slug, got our paper. Stuff this thing in here. Now we are pressing some African Thai today, people. 31.5% THC, it's about the strongest thing you can get in Pennsylvania at the moment. Got the press set to 200 degrees, and we are getting ready to squish this thing. Right. Gonna get it to where I feel resistance, okay? It's called the heat soak point. And I do that by checking this handle. This is a weighted handle. It's made to help control the rate of pressure. So now, this handle will start moving down on its own slowly. The heat is now starting to work in the material, okay, and it's going to start initiating the flow of the oils and rosins. So, get that together here so that you can see what's going on in there. Kind of hard to see. We get the lighting kind of up here. Can you see it? Yeah. See what it's doing? It's already producing. Okay. It's already giving us rosin. Now, once it hits, once it really starts flowing, I'm going to tilt this thing forward 90 degrees and drip it right off the heat because the sooner it gets off the heat, the more stable it is. So I need to get it to the point where the flow is really starting to happen. I'm just going to give it a little help. See all the material starting to move mm -hmm. as I increase the pressure? Now see if you do it too fast, you'll get a blowout. The, the material will break out through the bag. Mm -hmm. So you've got to let the heat work its way into the material. And that will ensure that you're not going to have an issue with it. Okay, so we're almost at the point where we want to try and tip this forward. So we're going to the light right there. And there we go. It's called drip tech. Mm -hmm. Now, did you design this yourself? No, I did not. But the man who did is named Chaz Ryan, CRD Presses, uh -huh. out in California. He hand builds these. Oh, nice. He built this one for me uh, with this 90 degree tilt cradle. They don't come like this generally. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I could get the most out of the medicine I'm making. Especially if I'm pressing for, for another patient. Uh -huh. you know, I, I want to make sure they're getting the most out of their money here. Okay. It's right at the edge. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come. I just don't think it's going to sugar up like the other stuff. It's just take a little bit longer. It's, it'll, it'll start dripping here. And why don't you think it'll sugar up like the other stuff? <coughs> and what does that mean? Well, I pressed some PT Star Dog earlier. Uh huh. And PT Star Dog is, um, when I press that strain, instead of it flowing, it, it comes out of the bag and instantly turns to sugar. Okay. A sugar-like consistency. Mm -hmm. It's called, and, and sometimes it'll do that and it'll turn into butter. It's called auto butter. Okay. Usually it's an indication that there's a, really a lot of uh, waxes inherent in that particular strain for it to act like that when under pressure. Okay. Most strains that you find will flow like oil. But I'm not getting that right now. Mm -hmm. oh. But we are getting some amazing color. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. So blonde. Check this out. This is the African tie. Look at the color on that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm smelling it. It's just so gorgeous. So I'm just going to keep letting this heat work in here. It's, it's so crazy how your strain is different. Like ours was yeah. sugary. Yep. I didn't know all this. It's just so cool. Yep, that's, that's what got me into really liking this. In fact, I have people kind of joke that I'm like Bob, Bob Ross when I'm talking about doing this because this really is very just relaxing for me. I love watching what the plant does and responding to it. Well, I think every patient should experience this. I mean, well, I think it's interesting that I didn't realize that each different flower or strain oh, yeah. 
comes out of the press differently. They do, and, and they cure differently too. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between the way it is when it first comes off the press and the way it is if you let it sit and cure for a couple of days under glass. Hmm. It changes in consistency, color, and the, and the flavors deepen. Now, I'm seeing this thing looks like it's sugaring up too, and I don't get that. That is really bizarre it's because the last humid. time I pressed this, it flowed. It was gusher. It's super humid in here, though. Oh, I got a blowout too. I can see that right now. Yep, I sure do. Now I know what you are. Is it when the flower comes out of it outside the press? When the bag yeah, it's opens. When it comes out of the bag. Oh, okay. Over pressurized it. Because they use alcohol. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, like, I'm 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 it's not that big of a deal. It's just it you'd rather not have in. to go through the process of cleaning it up. Because it mixes in with the. It's not that. It, it's it's not so much that. I mean, there's our puck. All right. Okay. We have a little bit of contamination here. It's no big deal, and that's the thing. People will will get discouraged because they'll have something happen like a blowout, and they'll think, "Oh my God, I'm not doing something right." Mm -hmm. You can do everything right, and still get a blowout. Mm -hmm. Okay, it happens. It's just part of what happens when you make medicine. It's never perfect. You're dealing with a plant. You're dealing with a lot of variables. Mm -hmm. So, you just come in here, find all the little green specks, and you get them out. No, you're right. That's not bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot worse. That's really I've, I've really had a lot Is worse. That, did you call that a sugar? This, this sugared up just like the other stuff did. Okay. And I'm wondering if maybe there's an environmental factor that's doing that, like the humidity or it something in the room. Mm -hmm. It is so, warm in here. And with so all the rain yesterday, that might be, it's gonna rain again tonight, you can feel it. That might rain. be a factor. Could it be a factor in how well it was hydrated or how much it was hydrated? No, I, I hydrated okay. this. I, I always hydrate all my stuff the same same okay. amount of time. Okay, so you know it's Yeah, not, I'm real okay. consistent. It's, it, and it's not, it's not a problem. No. Like I said, the, it's just a consistency thing. It's, it's sugar instead of wax. Some people mm -hmm. prefer so that's, it to that's fine. I mean, some people like sugars more. Than an oil? Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a very individual people. thing. Different it's consistency, off, yeah. You just pressed, it looked almost like uh, shattered to me now. It, it right. will change as it sits and relaxes. The yeah, no, I like it. Waxes and lipids that are in it will realign as it rests. Mm -hmm. okay. So tomorrow when you take it out, it may say. look <laughs> and, and taste yeah. different than it does today. Okay. You just had it fresh. You have it tomorrow, it'll taste different, I promise. It'll taste better. Next it'll time. taste better. <laughs> yeah. It's like wine or, or whiskey. You're, okay. You age it and it increases in complexity. So. Now we got it all cleaned up. Let's get her up. See how much we got. There we go. <laughs> Actually, if you if you cool it too quickly, it'll turn into ground glass. Right. Consistency and it won't stick to itself and it'll pop off the paper and you'll spend your entire day chasing it down. <laughs> it's better when it comes out like this and it gathers up on itself. This is what you want. This is the stability that you're looking for. That's an indication that you A, had good flour to begin with, that the color, and B, that you pressed it properly. Not too high a temperature, not too long on the heat. This is what people pay me for because this takes a long time to, to get to do well consistently. This is more of a craft, it's not a science, it's an art. Right. It's like brewing beer or something like that in your home, it's that sort of vibe. <laughs> Master and laws and extract it. <laughs> That's what I am. And even when I have things like blowouts and stuff, the difference between me and somebody else is it would throw them off their square. For me, it's, I understand it's just a normal part of this. Sometimes it happens, and when it does, you just clean it up. Look at that. Nice. 
Now, we started off with an eighth. Let's find out what our yield is. This is kind of my favorite part, actually. How well, you usually yield for an eighth. Well, that's the thing. Again, it's every strain is different. There's no there's no consistent answer to that. Uh, in fact, even when you press the same strain months apart and it's a different phenotype, it'll it'll produce completely differently. But generally speaking, if you get a half gram, that's an acceptable yield off of an eighth. Three quarters of a gram to a gram is is excellent, and anything over a gram is exceptional. Generally speaking, indicas produce better than sativas. And the higher t the THC percentage of the original flower, generally the bigger the yield. So that's why I try and stick with stuff that's 25% or higher. And anything over 30% I can get my hands on. 1.06, baby, all day long. So <laughs> I am, damn, I'm good. No, I'm just kidding. 1.06, that's what I'm talking. Six from the first one. So what is the benefit of pressing it rather than vaporizing it as a flower? There are several. Uh, the first of which is when you're vaping plant material, you're still inhaling plant material. Mm -hmm. When you take the plant material away, that's what you're after. That's what you're smoking when you're vaping flour, but you're not getting it in a concentrated form. Right. Now that I have concentrated it, it is usable in very, very small amounts, okay? Literally a dosage to vape, right there. Like a size of That a little rice. bit. Mm -hmm. Now see, that's why I got into doing this in the first place. I'm on a fixed income, I'm a disabled veteran, mm -hmm. okay? So when I go and buy flour, I want to get the most value for my money that I can do, right? So, I go and I spend $65 on an eighth, right? Mm -hmm. If I took it home and dry vape this, this would be about half a day's worth of medication for me. Right, right. Now, I just took this and I got a gram of concentrate. Yes. This will medicate me for three it, days. It will help you so now I just tripled the value of my, of my dollar. Okay. Yeah, right. That's why I started doing this. Right. And okay. because of my lung damage from the Gulf War, I can't handle residual chemicals. And every sorry, one sorry, of the I'm sorry. commercially processed concentrates are processed using solvents. CO2, butane, propane, even alcohol for RSO, right? Yeah. The problem is that they don't perfectly purge every bit of residual compound. Mm -hmm. When I vape it, it damages my lungs. Mm -hmm. This is a completely solidless process. Heat and pressure, that's it. Single stage, flour to concentrate. You don't have to take anything out or add anything back in like they do with the commercial stuff. Right. And this is as close, this is a full spectrum, whole plant concentrate. But here's the best part. When they do a chemical extraction and they run the material, that plant material is done. It's gone. Right. I save all my pucks, right, from all my presses. And there's still residual cannabinoids in here. Okay, this is not a 100% efficient process. That's why commercial companies don't do it. Right. Okay, they get everything out and they use chemicals. This leaves residuals. But rather than throw this away, I take these plugs, I cook them in a slow cooker with coconut oil. I, the cannabinoids, because they're fat soluble, come out into the infused oil. And then I can take that coconut oil and I can fill capsules with it, I can make edibles with it. Um, you can um, you know, make brownies and gummies and stuff. I do that all the time. Right, right. Now, even even beyond that, the equipment you use to vape it, whether it be an email or something like like this Motar here, okay? You clean this thing up using Q-tips and alcohol. Usually, people use isopropyl alcohol. I use 190 proof because it's food safe. 
Right. So all of the reclaim, which is what it's called when you clean the residuals out of here, it's called reclaim, gets dissolved into the alcohol. And that creates a tincture that is food safe and fully activated already. Now you can do a couple of things with that too. You can use it just as it is, or you can yeah, uh, reduce the alcohol, I mean, burn it off in a slow cooker, and you make fika, which is like RSO, but without using plant material as a starting base. Like fika is way stronger than, than RSO because you're already starting to concentrate. You're just removing the, the solvent from it. Okay. So every single penny that I spend on medicine yields, this process yields me additional so today, medicinal it. value at every stage. Yeah, right. You approximate the edibles, the tincture goes in the fico, or you can use it as it is. Yeah. So, so, so this is really the greenest so way to do concentrate. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And this is also yeah. something yeah. anybody can learn to do this. The, the hard I part is buying the equipment. The equipment's expensive. This press here is $900. This is the cheapest 20-ton rosin press you will find on the market. Everyone else, if you look at uh, Mean Green Machine or, or Nut Smasher or any of those, and you try to find a 20-ton rosin press that drip text like this one has, you're going to spend $3,000. Right. And, okay. and where did you get this one? I got this one handmade by my friend Chaz Ryan. He runs a company called CRD out in California. Okay. He makes several versions of presses. This is his intermediate press. This is the KT20. He makes a mini which is oriented differently, and it's a smaller package. Uh -huh. It's also a 20-ton press, and it's only $550. That was the first one I got from him. I upgraded to this one because this is easier for me to show people what's going on. It's more of an open design, so it, it lends itself more to teaching and, and videos and stuff. Okay. So that's, that's why I got this one. Now, he has one that's bigger than this called the KT40, it's this wide, it's this tall, it has three heated plates and you can press from both sides at the same time. This press will handle a maximum capacity of more, two ounces at one time. I can press this. His KT40 press, you can do a quarter pound. So, you know, it's more of a commercial, commercial, commercial grade. <laughs> Even this one is really not a personal press. This is more of a commercial grade press. Yeah. Now the mini that he makes, has instead of four by eight plates, it's got three by six plates. It's made to press an ounce and a half at a time at the most. And again, it's a much smaller, you know, packaging. Um, that one is it's a it's a great press to start with. It truly is. The the reason, like I said, I upgraded to this is because I give classes and demos, and I want to be able to not have people have to get this close to see what's going on. Right, right. right. So. So how often do you do classes or demos? I do classes every couple of months down at the education center next to Cresco. Okay. Just had one this month that I did. Um, I also go to the Holistic Wellness Conference that they have up at the Monroeville Convention Center. I press up there. Mm -hmm. On 420, I was at the Monroeville Public Library pressing. Will you be at the next event in Monroeville, the Mind, Body, Spirit? That's, up that's the one I pressed at last yeah, time. Right. What, do you remember what date that is? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll be there also. And I, and I will be there too with this press, and probably sitting okay. at the yeah. Healing Center's yeah. table, because yeah. that's where I was at last time. Nice. Um, um, do you also, so you said people. that you do this for people, for other patients. I do. Um, and yeah. how can they get a hold of you to advance? Yeah. If you want to grab one of my business cards right there, uh, it has all my social media links. Um, YouTube, I, I do videos of this. In fact, we're doing one right now that will be posted to YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. So YouTube, I live in Facebook, Aaron Asher. You live in Penn Hills. Okay. So I have patients come over all the time. If you bring properly rehydrated dispensary flour. Mm -hmm. I'll press it for you. Nice. Um, I, I'm you trying to help out patients to you know, help them lives. get the most so out of their medicine. Know. That's yeah. wonderful. So they could bring up to two and a half ounces to you and, yeah. and have it pressed. And generally, yeah. people will come by with an eighth or something like that. I mean, you know, people can't afford a lot. So I can barely even afford the flour that I buy per month at the current price, prices. But, um, 
Yeah. This helps me extend it. This is this this is the difference between being able to medicate effectively an entire month. Or month. Okay. And it's all because you drive in, it's worth half a day's worth of medication. You make it out, you make a grand of loss out of it, it's three days worth of medication. It, it, it really is kind of a little brain if, if, if you are having a hard time affording your meds. This is a very, very simple way to get the most out of it. Right, if you said you think this is a cleaner way to consume Oh, it absolutely is, too, because there's no residual solvent. So once you put this in, in your vape, um, this is what I use personally. This is called a, a Motar coilless wax vaporizer. Um, it's very simple. It's just this part. You have to have your own box mod already for it. Can you just use any box mod? Anything that will handle up to 45 watts. Because this will this vapes in the range of 30 to 45 watts. So it just heats up. Good question. It starts melting the material. And then you're going to see a little cloud form in the center. Now your email address. You might need to see you gave. I usually write it on it. So you want to log in on our mission website. P D O H. That's some good medicine.